Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Toops and this short video will review how to make an experimental design chart. When scientists design experiments to test a hypothesis, there are several variables that are consistently used. We want you to be able to identify those variables in an experiment as well as know how to use them when you design one of your own. Here at Wakeland we use a template that we will refer to as the experimental design chart or we'll say do an experimental design or make an experimental design. It works very well for most experiments. You will need to know how to set up a proper experimental design chart. So let's get started. Please take out your pink packet and flip to page 7. The title of this page is Experimental Design Model. Now there's an, a model and a template at the top which I will go through and then there's an example down at the bottom that you can um, apply what we talk about as we discuss the template. First of all, there are three significant parts of the experimental design model. The title, the hypothesis, and the actual chart itself. When you get ready to complete one of these, we suggest that you start with the chart. So what that means is that you need to leave space at the top of your paper to go back in and write a proper title and a testable hypothesis. So, you know, leave three or four inches at the top of your paper and then set up the rectangular table similar to what you see uh, here at the top of page seven. When you do the experimental design model this way, you will have the information that you need in order to go back and write that title and develop your hypothesis. All right, so let's start with the chart. If you'll notice in the first column, there is a list of five of the variables that you must define and identify in the experiment. The independent variable, in other words, what are you, what are you testing? What are you changing? The second level is the levels of the independent variable. In other words, what are the values of those various tests that you're doing? Third is repeated trials. How many times are you testing each level? Fourth is the dependent variable. What are you measuring as a result of changing the various levels of the independent variable? And finally, constants. What things are staying the same throughout every single experiment that if they weren't the same, it could skew the results? And so it's important to know that uh, for the readers to know okay, we kept all of this exactly the same in order for our data to be valid and consistent. And when you're looking at constants, we want you to be able to identify at least three constants in every experiment. Some will be given in the narrative, others you might have to infer just from your imagination of, of seeing this experiment or thinking how this experiment could have taken place. So um, let's look at the example down at the bottom. Uh, I'm not going to read the narrative to you, but you can do that on your own. This person is testing how fast bees leave their hive based on a different uh, level of perfume or a different type of perfume. So uh, if you look, the independent variable in this case is the type of perfume. Notice that, the, that she did not write uh, water, perfume one, perfume two, etc. in that first thing. She was just identifying what the independent variable was. The second variable, the levels, is where you identify the various types of the IV that you tested. Um, if you're doing colors, you would say, okay, uh, the color of the flower, and then your levels would be red, yellow, purple, white, okay? So those are just the, the a little bit more detail in your independent variable. The third variable is repeated trials. In other words, how many times did you test each one of those levels? Notice that she tested, in this case, she tested water three times, she tested perfume one three times, perfume two three times, and perfume three three times. So she wrote the same number underneath each of the levels, and that's what we would like you to do. Now you may be thinking, well that's silly, why not just write three and let it go across? The reason that you don't do it that way is there may be times that you don't have the exact number of repeated trials. Things happen. People break test tubes. Petri dishes fall on the floor. Um, something could have knocked over the saucer that she put the perfume in. So um, you always want to... It's, it's fine to have a different number there, but typically researchers try to use in, and test it 
um, repeat the experiment so that it makes the data more legitimate. Okay, so that's where you list that beneath repeated trials. Dependent variable is the fourth uh, line. This is where you're going to indicate what are you measuring and, very important, the units of measurement. Uh, in this case, you can see that she is measuring the time that it took the bees to emerge from the hive. And she's indicated the units in parentheses off to the side. It might be seconds or milliseconds, whatever it is, you have to include that there. So it, because it does make a difference in how a reader would interpret your data. Finally, constants. What things stayed the same in this experiment? And if you look at the, in the narrative, you can see that all experiments were conducted on the same day when the weather conditions were similar, that is the air temperature, the wind, and so forth. And then she repeated it three times, or, or experiment on three different days. So boom, there's your repeated trials, and there are some constants to choose from. You can also find others within the narrative. So after you've developed the chart, you've identified your IV and your DV, go back and formulate a proper title. As we begin uh, developing and, and planning experiments, we're going to ask you to follow a general format for the title because we want you to be able to identify these things and we want you to develop um, proper titles. And that format is going to be the effect of the IV on the DV, okay? And if you look at the example that's given here, the effect of, what's the IV in this experiment? Different types of perfume. On the DV, what's the DV in this experiment? The time that it took the birds, no, not birds, bees, to emerge from the hive. Notice that she didn't put the units up there, which is okay. Um, she didn't say the effect of water, perfume one, perfume two, perfume three. No, she summarized it by just simply saying the effect of different perfume types, the overall independent variable, on the time it took the bees to emerge from their hives, the DV, just in a, in a kind of a summary statement. It's a well-developed title. Then look at the hypothesis. Another thing that we're going to ask you to do is use an if-then statement for the hypothesis. If, and think IV, then what's going to happen to the DV? In other words, they're going to predict what is happening. If bees are agitated by ester X, then they'll emerge from their hives faster than if the perfume contains ester X. Okay, so that's a legitimate hypothesis. Um, and that came from the, the narrative, so go back and read that. So you can see the benefit of doing the chart first because it helps you accurately identify the IV and the DV, formulate a proper title, and then formulate a testable hypothesis. Okay, that's it. Um, good luck designing your first experimental design in class tomorrow, and I uh, hope this was helpful.